The Beyond the Veil update is just around the corner and I think it is time to put together a video that can showcase some of the weapons that I believe will be good weapons to level up and prepare for the new update. Now these will be good in the roads as well as the mists and these can even double for solo open world roaming. They're all going to work all around the board and I wanted to make this video just to show you guys and have something for you to kind of work towards as well as we have to keep in mind that a lot of weapons do work open world. These are just five weapons that I'm going to be talking about in this video. Video. I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible just to kind of give you guys an area to start working in of some of the weapons that are the best for open world roaming in a solo manner. And a lot of things in Albion, such as weapons and armor combinations, can work open world. It's just these right here have been tried and true and are the best route to take when it comes to leveling up armor pieces and weapons for open world activities. So we're just going to get right into it and we're going to look at the armors first. So these are the armor pieces that I pulled for open world roaming. So we have to start from the top. We have the fiend cow. So the fiend cow is the purge cow. So this one can take any buffs. It can remove runs. It can remove sword stacks. It can remove heals. It's a it's a purge helmet that can remove buffs from enemies. Now this is really good when you are trying to chase people. If you do get maybe a gank on them or you invis onto them and they're working like a node or a mob, you don't want them to see you coming. You can pounce on them, burst all your damage, and if they do try to run away you can purge them and they're a sitting dunk at that point you still have your run or you still have your abilities they're not gonna be able to get away because now their run is on cooldown and they didn't even get to use it the next one we have is the mage cow and the mage cow does have the poison ability depending on the tier and enchantment as well as your level in the mage cow the poison will do more damage over those five seconds as well as on any cloth helm, we always do aggression for more damage and healing from the casts. Now, this one is good for clearing mobs as well as PvP. So it helps you tick down players' health. So this is always going to be a good one for open world roaming, as well as it'll be good in the mists. So the next one's going to be Guardian Helmet. And now why this one is good, and I don't know why it's not showing the abilities, but you're going to take Toughness, just so you get that extra def defense, as well as you're going to take Emergency Shield. Now, Emergency Shield, up to you and five allies, so this one can work in small groups as well. It's pretty nice. And then it cleanses all damage over time effects, so any dots that you have on you, like bleeds or any of those curse stacks, this will cleanse them off. And then if you're below 40% health, this one right here will give 714 shield to your health. I mean, if you have higher IP, this number is going to be bigger. But this one's really good because you can get out of range for like a blood letter execute or the death curse from the one-handed curse staff you can use this to help mitigate that damage so that you don't get instantly killed now going on to the chest pieces we're going to have the good old assassin jacket this one's always going to be good for any kind of open world content or any of those new content where you are going to be dealing with other players as the assassin jacket is vital as it can drop aggro from mobs if you are fighting mobs and you get into a sticky situation as well as if you do proc its invisibility damage does not reveal it so this is a good one to use in combat if you are trying to juke out your opponent or maybe you're getting jumped by a couple of players that you're not going to win the fight this is the first one that you're going to use to help juke you out of the fight and maybe they'll run another direction, gives you some more breathing room to use any of your abilities or boots to get away from them. If you're looking for more of a brawling build, the Hellion Jacket is always going to be a good choice as the Lifesteal Aura, as you have lower health, will heal you more. So for example, if we have below 20% health, we're going to do 97 damage every single tick. And this is last for 7 seconds, and this will hit them every 1 second. So on those 7 seconds, you're going to be hitting every opponent in the circle. And it's a 7 meter radius circle. You're going to hit every single opponent for 97 damage if you are below 20% health. And all the damage you do is 100% lifesteal. So it's going to go to your health. So this is a really sustaining jacket, especially if you are fighting multiple opponents at a time this can save you in a ton of situations now the next two i have are they're not preferred but they can be used often i have seen mercenary jacket and cleric robe out a lot for certain builds maybe like a battle axe or some people with spear like to use it for their force of spears so they can do like a hybrid pve slash pvp clearing build uh, but for the mercenary jacket you have bloodlust so what it does is it restores 73 health whenever you deal direct damage within the next six seconds and it only applies up to nine times so this will heal you when, whether you do damage with an ability a primary attack anything any of those nine types of damage that you do is going to be healing you for 73 health at least for this one this again this will scale up with your ip as well as if you have a higher tier or enchant jacket you're going to get more health when you use it cleric robe is more for like single target dps or you can see you see it on some magic builds uh, but some like you'll see like blood letters run this sometimes and the thing is is that they use their everlasting spirit what this does is it 
they're immune to damage for three seconds. So wh while they do this, they use it to nuke down your health and try to get to their execute range. I mostly see Bloodletters using this, especially for the five weapons we're going to be talking about. And, and the reason is, is because not only does it make you stupid squishy, but it has a ton of physical attack bonus compared to like the jackets. They have 20%, 25%. This one has 34% because I have this on here, but it, it's 30%. And then this one is 45 already without aggression. If we put aggression on here, it's another 8% damage. So this helps. It's more of a single target, just nuke build, like get in, get out. It just absolutely destroys people. And as for the boots, these are the ones that are tried and true that you cannot go wrong with. I kind of added minor in here just as an extra, but Royal Sandals, these are unpurgeable because they are a toggle ability so when you activate these if anyone tries to use a fiend cow purge on you or fist of avalon the purifying fist not going to take them away you're still going to have these boots regardless of whatever purge they try to use on you because these are unpurgeable boots so these can be really nice if you are dealing with a lot of people soldier boots is another one and i don't know why it's not showing it again uh, we have the rejuvenating sprints as well as the toughness to increase your sustain this is always going to be good because you are going to regen health while you are using this run so this is always a good one if you're trying to do more of a sustain build like with the one-handed spear it's just it's a health option so it's a way to increase your sustain you can use wanderlust as this does cover the most distance one of the most distance in the game aside from minor boots the only thing is that it has a slow startup time and your movement speed increases by 10 percent every one second and it stacks up to eight times and then after you have max stacks it lasts for seven seconds now you will cover a lot of distance using these boots i do caution though that they are purgeable so if you proc this and they hear the little whistle noise when you proc them they can purge you and you'll have nothing so you need to be very careful when using these maybe use like an invis try to get out of the nine meter range of the purge because this does have a nine meter range once you get out of range and you need to hope that they don't catch up to you because if you can't get these boots off they're not going to be catching you unless they're mounted up or someone's following you on a mount already you're going to be able to get away easily with these now we do have minor boots and it has the flea so you flee from enemies increase your movement speed by 120 percent for 10 seconds and you have crowd control resistance by 200 percent uh, max load is we, we should never be over max load so we shouldn't be relying on these boots anyways but the crowd control resistance as well as the movement speed for 10 seconds okay and but it silences you making you unable to do normal attack for 13 seconds so this is like the monster flea boots like these cover the most distance in the game out of any boots the thing is is they can be purged as well so again you need to be careful you do have an instant movement speed of 120 percent so they might miss the purge but try to make some distance between your opponents before using it especially if you inspected them and saw that they had a fiend cow you need to be very careful with that overall these are going to be your armor pieces that you're going to want to use when it comes to uh, open world roaming as well as i have some capes here which i'm going to throw in here real quick and these are the capes that I recommend if you are one to run any types of capes open world. The undead cape would be my first choice, even though it's not the first choice for budget builds as it does get pretty pricey up in the 4.2s and above. All of them are, all the undead capes are pretty expensive in general. The next best choice is Thefer cape if you want a little bit more single target damage as this will help you put out more damage every 15 seconds. Uh, we hit an enemy and it'll do 214 magic damage and it can it can hit up to four targets and it, cause it'll bounce between them, but it won't hit the same target twice. Don't ever underestimate the Fort Sterling cape as if you do get stunned silence or rooted it will cleanse all crowd control effects and debuffs at that point whenever they cast that on you it just becomes it just doesn't happen it just gets rid of it for that time and then in a minute 50 you can do it again and then for sustain and brawly builds martlock cape has never really done me wrong so when it activates and your health drops below 25 percent and protect yourself with a shield increasing your defense by 50 percent for five seconds so a lot of times i'll combine martlock cape with hellion jacket and when i do get low health this will proc during the fight and I get defense increase of 50% as well as the heal from the lifesteal aura will be going off and healing me at the same time. So this is one of the brawly like bomb builds that you can use if you are running in like a small group. It's kind of hard running solo Hellion Jacket Martlock Cape because you know again you're solo you don't have any backup. So those are going to be the capes. The next one I have is the weapons that we're going to talk about. So these are the five weapons that we're going to be going over. So I'm just going to put three armor pieces on. I usually run... Bean Cow, Assassin Jacket personally, and Royal Sandals, just because they're... I like the unpurgeable aspect of them, as well as I usually run an Undead Cape. I'm just going to throw these on just so I have some armor pieces on while we're doing this. And the first one that we have is the One-Handed Spear. Now, the One-Handed Spear is... It's a hybrid weapon. It's the Jack of All Trades, Master of None. And the main setup you're going to see is Lunging Strike, Impaler, and you have your Reckless Charge, as well as Life Leech. Now, this is a sustain build that you combine with either the Roast Pork or the Roasted Pyramid Snapper. And whenever you deal damage, it steals... 6.62% of the health the enemy has lost. 
So any kind of damage that you deal, these will help your healing when using this. And that's what helps with the sustain for the spear. Now this is the setup for it as well as the torch. We like the cooldown modifier as well as the attack speed. And this is a beautiful setup for open world roaming. This is a very good at PvE and PvP clears. That's why I want to put this in here for the Beyond the Veil update. Because it's good for clearing mobs as well as if you've been working on it for a while, it's really good in PvP. It does have a high skill ceiling, so it is a weapon that will take a little bit longer to master because a lot of these abilities can be used for different situations. So you just need to work with these abilities and we're not going to talk about them in this video because this video is going to get a lot longer than it needs to be. I'm trying to keep it as short as possible. So we put that up. Next one we have is the blood letter. Now we're going to be taking deadly swipe and for this one I don't have these leveled up but you could use either the throwing blades, the dash if you want a hard mobility option. And then we have Shadow Edge, which pulls you towards enemies. It's another mobility option, as well as it doubles for chase and PvP. And then, usually I just use Throwing Blades right now. I don't use the daggers too often, but these the Blood Letter is a very good weapon. And then we have the Lunging Stab. So you dash towards a targeted position, dealing physical damage to all enemies you pass based on their current health. If they're below 40% health, we're going to do 1,007 damage. Now, this is essentially an execute so if you hit at least one enemy player below 40 percent health it increases your cooldown rate by 90 percent for one second so you helps you get this ability back faster this is an execute weapon that's all it is that's why i said the cleric robe is something that you'll see ran with this and most likely you're going to see deep cuts as it's just going to help the damage single target damage over time they do like a mage cow cleric robe deep cut they get their they get their stacks and they're slowly just whittling you down to get you into lunging stab range and that's another thing why i mentioned guardian helm can save you from this because as soon as they use this they really don't have as much dps options so that is just something that to keep in mind when you are fighting them uh, next two we have is going to be battle bracers and fists of avalon now these both just they act the same they both have the same abilities except for the e uh, you're going to want to take dragon leap triple kick and you're going to take hard to catch so the reason this is good is it's good at clearing mobs as well as it's good at harassing players so it has a lot of interrupt as well as it has a lot of so like the w will interrupt the q has an uppercut uh the falcon smash just it does a crap ton of damage so these ones really good for pvp as well as we have hard to catch which increases your damage resistance and crowd control resistance when you use your w when we use our triple kick so this doubles as a mobility weapon that can be used to get in and get out and the only difference between these two is the purifying combination so both of them have a dive that do come in so if we do like a this one comes flying in and then when i put these on it's going to take us about 18 seconds to get the cooldown but this one it just dives in the position when you float in the air you become immune to all crowd control effects but then when it comes to the Fists of Avalon, you are, when you leap in the air, you're immune to all crowd control effects until impact, as well as it throws them in the air for one second. And the Purifying Fist, the second part of this combination, so you come flying in, and then you punch in whatever direction that you want, but it purges all buffs from the enemies except healing over time effect. So this one can double if you have two purges. This one is huge for PvP, as the purge is absolutely detrimental to some fights. You can take Hellion Jackets off, you can take Mercenary Jackets off, it's absolutely insane uh the type of utility that it brings to the fight uh the next one i'm sure a lot of you know about and it's going to be probably a favorite is going to be the bear paws now the bear paws are uh, essentially they are good at pve they're good at clearing mobs as well as they are a monster gank weapon like these are the mother of all gank weapons and that's because of the e so the razor cut uh, you leap in the target direction dealing 551 physical damage and a cone in front of you on impact it causes all enemies hit to bleed dealing 180 true damage over six seconds and when you hit at least one player with with it it reduces the cooldown of its ability by 40 percent now it has a 30 second cooldown as well as it relies on the e a lot when it comes to pvp so you have to be working on hitting your e but this weapon has a lot of mobility just because you can hit the adrenaline boost you have your run and then they can go flying in with their bear paw e like that and it does it just it brings a lot of ability as well as it has a lot of it relies a lot on bleeds so you're just whittling down your opponent with these and mobs so the bleeds are really good at taking down mobs as well as the e on this absolutely shreds through mobs and then adrenaline boost just helps your damage move speed and attack speed for seven seconds so these are all this is a really good weapon and again all of these weapons work with what i'm wearing right now as well as any of the stuff in here these ones are kind of interesting as well as guardian helm these ones are special cases uh, but again i want to reiterate that you can't go wrong with any of these setups as you are moving in the right direction to have some good builds for open world now the last one we're going to talk about is the bow of badan so i usually run poison arrow we have frost shot and then we have the raging storm and then i just use piercing arrow every normal attack decreases the target enemy's defense and it stacks up to 
you four times. So this one, why I think this is going to be really good for the miss, and I haven't used it too much. As you can see, I'm missing some levels, but I do have an idea that this is going to be good for the miss, not only because the E, but overall it's single target DPS is absolutely amazing when it comes to the poisons. And if you stack it with like a mage cow, uh, mostly you'll see assassin jacket with it. And then you can do soldier boots or royal sandals. But the thing with this is the poison helps to whittle down the target as well as your opponents and it stacks up to three times. And then you can have your mage cow. Frost shot is kind of its mobility as well as chase option. And then the Raging Storm E, this one will, you shoot a storm infused arrow in the target direction, which explodes into a five meter radius and it lasts 4.8 seconds and it deals 72 magic damage every 0.3 seconds. Enemies leaving the area will continue to take 507 magic damage over 1.8 seconds. This is the big one right here though. Whenever the ability deals damage, it will interrupt the enemy's spell casting. So essentially when you're fighting any type of mobs and you cast this on them, it will prevent any spell casting. They're just gonna be sitting there. They can only primary attack, but anything else, they can't cast any of their abilities. They can't really do anything as well as enemy players can't cast abilities as well. So this is why this is good for PVE as as well as if you get good with your skill shots, you it'll be good for PvP as well. This is a skill shot ability, so you need to make sure that the arrow hits. If you miss this, then you're in 30 second cooldown and you can't do anything about it. So that was the last weapon that we were going to talk about for this video. And I wanted to actually take them out and showcase all these weapons, but I don't want this to turn into like a 45 to 50 minute video. I know a lot of you guys don't like to watch really long, stupidly long videos on YouTube. So we're trying to just keep this as simple as possible to talk about the weapons and kind of what they can bring to the Beyond the Veil update as well as open world roaming. Again, you can use all these for open world roaming. I just believe a lot of these are going to work really well in the mists. The new update for the roads as well as the uh, the single and duo player content that they are bringing for the greater miss now these are the pots uh invis pot is the one i usually take but you can double down for these as you if you're in like a small group and you want to just go full brawl you can take healing pots to help your sustain or you can take resistance pots when you dive in if they do have a lot of damage coming you can pop a resistance pot to help increase your defense as well as crowd control resistance to kind of keep you in the fight longer we do have the roast which i said you should use for the spear uh, i wouldn't use these for anything else though just use it for the one-handed spear because this is meant to be like a hard sustain build uh, the next one is going to be beef stew so we do have it deals increases your damage dealt by 13.5 percent we have the omelet and these are all for 30 minutes uh, all the foods we have the omelet which increases your cast speed and cooldown rate by 13.5 percent you can never go wrong with omelet with any any weapon really cooldown as well as cast speed is just amazing for any weapon the more abilities you can use the better and then this one just increases your damage now if you want to double down on both of these you can combine these and make you can't combine them but you can use eel stew instead so eel stew increases all your damage you deal and your cooldown rate by 6.7 percent it is a little bit less but you get best of both worlds so this is usually the one that i'm running is poison and eel stew and then I, i'm a I'm a glove user, so I use majority of the time you'll see me running Battle Bracers or Fists of Avalon. But these are all the weapons that you can use in the new Beyond the Veil update. Now, these are all the stuff that I was going to talk about in this video, and I hope that it didn't get too long. But the update is around the corner. It's coming November 21st, and I am super excited for the content that we can get while in there and the guys that we're going to make for it. But other than that, guys, that is going to be it for the video. I hope you enjoyed this video on the best five weapons to take for the Beyond the Veil and the new Rhodes update. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video, and I'll see all of you in Albion online.